Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, we're going to take a look at the financial services industry with a fiduciary, his journey just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, the financial services industry is huge, and here in Dallas-Fort Worth, it seems like every other person that you meet is in financial services, but not all of them are created equal. To talk about that today, Van Sparse. He is a, a, a fiduciary, and your company is called Your Dedicated Fiduciary. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, my firm goes by YDF, which is an acronym for Your Dedicated Fiduciary. Okay, so people have heard this word. What does that mean? A fiduciary, unlike all so-called financial advisors, is morally, ethically, and most importantly, legally required to do what is truly in the best interest of the client. And having consulted financial advisors for about a decade, I learned more than I bargained for after spending thousands of hours inside of the financial services industry. For example, many financial advisors have to satisfy what's called regulation best interest which ironically does not necessarily mean that it is truly in the best interest of the client. So if the shoe fits, you can wear it, but is it the appropriate size and fit for the client given the idiosyncratic uh, nature of a client situation? That's the point, and a fiduciary has to satisfy that obligation. And Vance has uh, risen to the point in his industry where he's often called on to lecture to his own industry. Let's go ahead and roll that clip. Hello and welcome to Advanced Financial Planning Real World Strategies. My name is Vance Bartz and I want to start with a very sincere thank you to each and every one of you because right outside the hotel it's sunny and 80 degrees and you could be at the pool or at the beach drinking Mai Tais and listening to house music. But no, you're in here listening to me lecture and babble on about very geeky advanced financial planning strategies. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. So why am I here? I don't mean philosophically, why am I here? I mean, literally, why am I here today? I'm here today because I spent 10 years of my life consulting and teaching many of the nation's leading private wealth management firms and financial advisors very specifically on how to invest for their high net worth and ultra high net worth clients. And during that time, I learned absolutely everything that I could about what financial advisors do for their clients. But more importantly, what many of them don't do for their high net worth clients, which unfortunately leaves them underserved. So well, Vance, you're a natural. Uh, you're, you're funny, you're smart, um, you're engaging. Have you always been kind of an entertainer, if you will? My mom would say yes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, and I'm jealous of his voice. In 25 years of TV news, I never had his voice of God. I want you to say, like, imagine in a world. Right. He could do well, voiceover work. I could. Okay. You're... Maybe that's a backup plan for me. If this financial <laughs> services thing doesn't work out, exactly. I could always do voiceovers. And uh, Vance is often called on to appear on CNBC and uh, various networks. We got some video of him. I think this was like San Diego or something like that, you in studio. Um, tell us uh, what it's like to be called on by the media. Is, is that fun to educate through the media? Very much so. I thoroughly enjoy investing time and energy in educating the financial services community and the public because, to reference what I mentioned earlier, the public doesn't know what it doesn't know about financial advisors. For example, many people don't even need a financial advisor if they have the ability to research their situation 
And secondarily, many financial advisors unfortunately lack the advanced planning acumen and expertise to really manifest maximum value for clients' estates. And so it's quite humbling and very flattering to not only get invitations from these large investment conferences to hop up on stage and share the knowledge, but also when the fourth estate calls to bequeath upon the people that which should be known. Well, one of the things that's cool about you, because uh, as a former broadcaster, I listen for, you know, are you using industry terms? And you have a way of like, uh, without talking down to the audience, uh, making complicated uh, financial subjects easy to understand. You know, I really got that because in college, my favorite class was organic chemistry, and I mean that. And I would teach organic chemistry and biochemistry to other college students. It was part of my curriculum. Really enjoyed it. So to take someone's estate tax problem, or let's say they own 17 investment properties, or they might own a business in Dallas or San Diego or Baltimore, and they go, I really want to transfer this to my heirs, or I want to take this to market. What are the complex planning strategies, what I often refer to as the alphabet soup, which generally involves different types of trusts and so forth. What do I need to implement in my estate so that I can keep my estate together as much as possible so that should something happen to me, or if we have a liquidity event, my heirs don't fight over the one thing that really should be fostering familial unity, which is the estate itself. Yeah, he's a, he's a family man. He's got a beautiful son and daughter. In fact, my favorite part of this segment is this clip that I found as I was doing homework on you. This is uh, Vance and his lovely daughter. Let's go ahead and roll that. Okay, it's officially 2023, and we wanted to wish you a Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year! Yay! One of the questions I commonly get from clients at the beginning of the year is what books I'll be reading. And Delaney wanted to start by sharing the book that she will be reading this okay, year. Okay, I'm so sorry between my book today and a cause unicorn never wears a tutu. Never let a unicorn wear a tutu. I have this book. You do, baby girl. And okay, can Daddy share his books? Yeah. All right, first up, which is technically a reread, is Fed Up by my good friend Danielle DiMartino Booth. Subtitled, An Insider's Take on Why the Federal Reserve is Bad for America. Do you know that lots of people have a newfound interest in interest rates after last year? Hmm? What do you think? I'm going to have this book and see it out a little bit. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Number two, written by my good buddy Brian Portnoy, is Geometry of Wealth. Subtitled, How to Shape a Life of Money and Meaning which is at the core of so many of our multi-generational Daniel, familial conversations. Daniel. That's Danielle. Yes, Daniel. baby girl. Well, Domatino. That's right, baby. Number three, Investment Biker by Jim Rogers. Do you know that when Daddy resigned, hey, hey, do you know that when Daddy resigned from his former career, he rode a Harley hey, around the country for a year? This is the motorcycle. That's right, and do we ride motorcycles in this family? Nope. That's right. This is already my book. And why don't we ride? Oh, that's so precious. Why don't we ride motorcycles in this family? Be because you you fall and crack your head open. That's and right, and baby and girl. <laughs> Alrighty. The next is from Impressed to Obsessed by John Pickle. Subtitled, The 12 Principles for Turning Customers and Employees into Lifelong Fans. One of the things that we really try to do is to positively micromanage the client experience here. Next is Killing Sacred Cows by Garrett Gunderson. Subtitled, Overcoming the Financial Myths that are Destroying Your Prosperity. This came very highly recommended by an economist friend. And last, but certainly not least, The One Thing, written by Gary Keller. Subtitled, The Surprisingly Simple Truth Behind Extraordinary Results. And speaking of one thing, you're my one thing, baby girl. Do you know that? You know I love you? I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, it's okay, baby girl. No problem. It just came what, out. What is that? What is this, son? That's a book that daddy got at a conference. Hey, can I get a high five? Can I get a low five? Can I get some knock? How about some rock and roll? Rock and roll. You say happy new year. <laughs> Are you doing an air guitar solo? <laughs> yes, baby girl. You got it going on, girl. Hey, who loves you? Daddy Christmas dear. Who got you that book? 
Cheryl. We say thank you, Auntie Cheryl. Thank you, Auntie Cheryl. So we love you. And we wish Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye. Bye. That's so adorable. I think you guys need a daddy-daughter TV show. I mean, she's, it's, it's, you're a natural, and, and, and clearly the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah, I think that, that would be a good idea. She's great. All right, was that one take? One take. That was it. Really? And baby girl, I know that you're going to watch this eventually, and I just want to remind you, never let a unicorn wear a tutu. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fans, we got about two minutes left. Sure. Okay, for the person watching this right now who says, man, I think I found my guy, what's the process? They contact you through the website and set up a, a Zoom interview or in, in-person interview? Sure. So given the extent to which I do financial media, my email address isn't public. So you can Google me, Vance Bars, and you'll see our website. There's a contact form. I always love spending at a minimum 15 minutes to really learn more about you, your situation. Many of our clients come to us and they've had financial advisors and CPAs and estate planners for often upwards of three or four decades. Wow. And we're available at a flat cost to review everything that they haven't done and then present to you the strategies that will help you keep as much money in the estate as possible. Alternatively, some clients turn to us and go, wow, I didn't know what I didn't know. You now know everything about me. What would you charge to manage my investments in my estate and to do all the things that I now realize that I have not had done? So the contact form is great, very responsive. I get up at four, I go to bed at nine, seven days a week, and absolutely love what I do. Outstanding. Well, thank you. You've been an amazing guest. We're going to have to have you back, and we're going to end with the website, which is yourdedicatedfiduciary.com. Uh, the great Vance Bars. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. You bet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.